Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. The five things that I've learned uh, coming from a small town in Zimbabwe, in Africa, to generating over $75 million in client revenue. Now, at any given moment, you're going to have to be selling something. You sell your ideas, you sell your personality, you sell your products and services, and people have to buy in to the person that you are and eventually do business with you. And when it comes to selling, in particular, when you're selling consulting, training, information, expertise, maybe paid speaking events like coaches and consultants that we are, it's very difficult because you're not selling anything tangible. No one is going to walk away with that information unless they're going to put it into practical use. That's when the value can be realized. Or if you're selling books, then at least they're walking away with something tangible. So when it comes to selling, in particular, luxury or high ticket selling, let me tell you something. I've seen it all. All right. I've had to sell myself to the Australian government that I am who I say I am. And they allowed me to come into the country. I've sold myself to my first employer when I had no experience at all in the job that he um, allowed me to do. And then I had to sell myself in the modeling industry and I had to sell myself into the Australian community. Also had to sell myself to my wife. And then sell myself to her family and now I'm doing a really good job every single day trying to sell myself to my daughters and everybody else that's out there wanting to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So I can say I've seen it all. As owner of both a digital agency and also, um, you know, somebody who is an immigrant in the country, um, working in high ticket sales and being a consultant and strategies for, um, you know, multi million dollar businesses. I've had, the, I've been uh, privy to nearly every sales trend and must do sales tactics or strategies or formulas that are out there. Um, and, you know, But let me tell you something, half of them, I threw them away. You know, the only time I've actually ever attempted to sell with a sales script or sales formula was in one of my jobs when I was actually a door-to-door salesman and I failed miserably at it. You know, in less than eight weeks, I had failed to sell a single thing. I think we were selling... um, um, electricity door to door and you know we, we would go to people's houses doors knock and then try and recite the script and obviously my my accent didn't come out well and and it was cold I was miserable and it just the energy wasn't right and I think we were actually just selling maybe like a $34 a month product but still that was you know nobody wanted to buy anything from me and it's safe to say that I believe that i I'd never get back to selling again, just given those circumstances. And I'd even go as far as saying that I actually hated selling and, and I was rubbish at it. The end. I didn't want to hear about it. And that's why I took upon myself to go into the modeling industry where I had I needed not to physically sell something to people. But guess what? I eventually noticed that I was actually selling my attitude, my character to you know, model agencies that were, um, you know, um, booking me or things like that. So fast forward to today, you know, the opposite is true. I love selling. Me being on this podcast right now, I'm selling. You know what I mean? Not only do I love selling, but I actually sell it with ease. You know, the reason is because 
I realized that I'm actually helping a lot of people by me showing up every single day. So that has actually changed my perception of what sales are. You know, I've, I've closed sa- sales while I was, um, you know, at the airport. Um, I've closed sales while I was out drinking and I was so drunk. I've, I've closed sales while I was on holiday in Bali. Um, you know, right through to right now where we are helping people do five, six or seven figure, um, you know, um, revenues and I've also sold people on coaching and strategy programs you name it I can sell it and I've curved a successful career like I mentioned right at the start that I came from um, you know a very small town in Zimbabwe in Africa to generating above 75 million dollars in clients revenue and most of it has been um, through the pandemic when things were actually hard you know what I mean So I'm passionate about helping people grow their business because I know what it's like to come from very little. Um, And as I keep telling you that I was born in Zimbabwe and we didn't have a lot of money or ambition to become, um, you know, the successful business person that I've become. But my life changed when I started realizing what selling was. All right. And, and, And separating it from the cutthroat um, convert, sell, or be closing, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I've done all of this, not as an employee, but as an actual business owner with actual mouths to feed. That is my family and my team. And this is not just lip service. You know, I'm so confident in my selling abilities that you've listened up until now in my podcast. And I have no problem pitching anyone that I think I can help, including celebrities. You know, when I was first getting started, there was a show on TV uh, called Shark Tank. And, you know, they would have celebrities like Naomi Simpson uh, and the lady from Boost Juice um, sit there and, you know, try and buy companies from people, etc., etc. And I realized that maybe no one would want to invest in my company. But I took an interest with uh, Naomi Simpson and I bought some of her books. One of them was Leave What You Leave. And I think the other one is called Ready to Soar. You should check out those books. They're absolutely good. Now, Naomi Simpson has a company called um, Red Balloon. And their tagline is Experience Happy. Now, I noticed something that could actually turn her company, you know, into something of a legend where, because the, the adventures and experiences that people, uh, do, you know, at red balloon, it's like, you know, um, you know, hot air balloon riding, uh, people can go on a cruise, uh, people can go horseback riding, all of those things that are romantic or maybe first date endeavors. She could actually utilize her platform and create a video series called Experience Happy, where she actually interviews people that have either gotten married or gotten a job or just had a really good human experience just because of either somebody they met while they were experiencing happy with her and believe it or not I pitched her that idea and I got a response from her uh, PA who must have just um, seen the idea and said oh no Naomi is not taking on any new ideas but if they consider this um, you'll be the first person to know do you know what I mean so like I'm saying it's not just leap surface I'm so confident in my selling abilities that I have no problem in pitching anyone that I think I can help including celebrities you know, and I kid you not, um, Naomi Simpson never got back to me, but that doesn't matter, right? What does uh, matter is the fact that I didn't take it to mean anything about me as a person. It actually uh, made me use, I still have the video somewhere where I actually use it in my uh, publicity to say, you know what, I can, I can help people with their business no matter what state they're at. And you know what, this is actually a common issue that I see in the entrepreneur space or within coaches and consultants that when it comes to selling, the habit of equating the value of what you're offering uh, becomes synonymous to you as a person and you validate yourself by how many yeses or how many no's you actually get. That couldn't be any further from the truth because you are not the product that you're selling. 
Okay, so that shouldn't uh, constitute your own uh, personal self worth um, just simply based on the fact that somebody has said no to you or not. You know what's really funny? I speak to a lot of business people and, and stuff, and some of them have come to a point where they are actually, um, you know, on a first name basis with me, and they actually trust me with their private um, issues, you know, and, and, and one of them is going through marital uh, stress, and he explained to me that that's why he was giving me stress, um, you know, while we're working together in his digital marketing, simply because that was the only thing that he could control because he had lost control of his marriage back at home. So if somebody says no to you, that is not an indication of um, you as a person. They might be going through stuff that you don't know nothing about. You know what I mean? So it's not your fault that people don't quite get what it is that you're trying to, um, you know, get them to utilize, you know. And a lot of that happens in the sales um, endeavors that we start validating ourselves just simply based on the um, getting a yes or a no from people. And some people might just be going through stuff. So I've scaled my business to un heard of figures in revenue, you know, across the businesses that I've worked with, you know, I work with celebrities, I work with, um, you know, some footballers and other high net worth individuals and ASX listed companies. And I still get the odd no, of course, you know, I've published books, I've published e uh, ebooks, I've spoken about most of these things on my podcast, but people still say no to me. But I don't take it to mean that my service isn't of value. Definitely not, you know, because I think with every building, there's only one penthouse. All right. And there could be a thousand other doors within that building, but there's only one penthouse. And all I need to do is sell that penthouse. I don't care about all the other doors that have been sold downstairs with all the other regular um, tenants. The only person I need to appeal to is that person who's going to buy the penthouse. And that's how I equate my high ticket services every single time that I show up into the marketplace. Okay. So that's why I actually enjoy selling. My aim is to ensure that you actually allow yourself to enjoy selling too, you know. After all, sales are the lifeblood of any profitable business. And if you're working with me, we want your business to be profitable and enjoyable. So that means you enjoying the actual selling. And it also makes sense to enjoy selling if running a successful business actually depends upon it. So here are the five things that I've learned, like I've mentioned to you um, you know, from coming from a small town in Zimbabwe in Africa to actually generating above $75 million in client revenue. One thing that I did myself, and I'm just going to ask you to do is to just throw away the rule book. Let me tell you something. All the books that you see that depict or talk about selling used to work in a time where you needed to meet people in person, you needed to shake hands with people, and um, you needed to call people uh, over the phone. Now, come to the day where you can actually send somebody a message, where you can speak on a podcast like this and people buy from you, or where you can do Zoom calls or webinars, some of the sales tactics no longer work. So the first major shift that I actually made that took me from struggling to selling with ease was throwing away the rule book no scripts no formulas not trying to sell um um you know how everyone else said it needed to be done i carved my own path and instead of trying to fit in into somebody else's box by looking for the answers that worked for others, I just leveraged what came naturally to me. You see, I speak and I talk a lot and I speak differently. And I use that to my advantage. I use that as an icebreaker. You know, half of the time when I'm at a dinner party or something like that, I actually ridicule myself. And I'll be like, if somebody, um, you know, decides they wanted to pay for dinner, I'll be like, oh. Use that as your selling point and say you've fed one uh, kid from Africa. If anybody comes to you and, and wants you to donate to hungry kids from Africa. So find something about yourself that you can actually use as a conversation starter or something that will make people remember you and just ease it into conversations. Because in the business space, there's always 
going to be somebody telling you uh, that they, they have the one and only magic way to sell. You know, like somewhat of a magic formula or a specific line or closing statement or a specific s- sentence that you can use or a perfect sell script. You know, in reality, none of these things actually work if you don't actually... Uh, if they don't fit in your natural conversation or the way that you naturally sell. You know, in my agency um, or in my digital uh, business, every person goes through their own unique sales training. You know, we are, we I don't ask people to read off of a screen or follow a formula that I've set because they don't have the, the motivation or the, the chat spot that I have. And we teach them to discover their own selling uh, formula or rule books per se. And then their own um, superpower. What makes them come alive in a conversation? That's what I want people to um, gravitate towards, not what they think people want to hear. You know, the one thing that's unique to them and something that would enable them to thrive as a salesperson is what we actually help them to foster and the other side of this teaching um that we do with our people is to help them understand who they're actually selling to because not everyone is going to be the same not everyone is going to um allow you to use the sale same sales tactics that other people do not absolutely um you know um appreciate you know what i mean and sometimes most of these uh things would go as far as what actual content does this person like consuming so you can use that um, as a way to uh, reach out to them or instead of going above and beyond about their demographies just figure out how they like their coffee that could actually make you win somebody so much because you can bring them a coffee at their office and start talking and 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 they would be very surprised as to how you paid particular attention to something that seems trivial so traditional selling is so focused on maybe showcasing yourself in the best light and it often fails to look at how people actually like to buy and what turns them off about being sold to Don't forget that people like buying stuff, but they don't like being sold to. So selling doesn't have to fit into some sort of rule book by what somebody else who was successful in the past says is the way to go. I mean, obviously, there's ways to do certain things, but you can sell however you want in whichever way you want, as long as it's right for you. Because if you try to be something that you're not, you'll be caught at. And before, um, you know, um, you know, trying to be, be something you're not, you obviously start appearing as inauthentic, you know? So after having done this, I reclaimed what selling actually meant for me, you know? Because you won't enjoy selling or find it easy if you actually hate the process of talking to people or see it as something that is icky, you know, or something that is just sleazy. And a lot of people already view selling um, you know, in, in that light, it's, uh, I don't know. And the issue is we've almost all experienced a selling situation that made us feel uncomfortable. And we've been, we felt a little bit pressured and, you know, we've left the sales experience feeling anything, but wanting to even buy the products that you came into the shop for. And this is where you need to reclaim what selling means for you. Despite all the bad experiences that you may have been, uh, you may have experienced or been sold into, you know, I decided it wasn't really selling's fault per se. It was to do with the way that people that were implementing these sales tactics were, um, you know, so out of alignment with the way that they we're trying to sell. And it made it, you know, somewhat of a faux pas when it, when it came to selling things to me, you know. Because sales wasn't the issue in any of this situation. Rather, it was how the person chose to do the selling. And I decided to view selling in a very different light. I decided to see it, um, you know, selling for what it is. Rather than, you know, um, associating it with the negativity that it came with or the unpleasant experiences or the beliefs that people have come to, um, you know, wrap selling around. You know what? 
I see selling as an empowering experience for both the person who's doing the selling and for the buyer. Because given the right environment, people absolutely love to buy. And given the right experience, people will rave about any selling experience to their friends. Turning selling into um, a positive endeavor for yourself would actually be the first step for you to actually sell with ease and confidence. Can you... Do you notice things that people brag about? You know, the car that they drive or the uh, watch that they wear, the clothes that they buy. It's things that they have bought that they are proud to showcase to their people, which then showcases their self-worth or whoever they think they are. So you want to approach each customer with the idea of helping them solve their problem or achieve a goal. Not of you selling your um, consulting or your training or your information or your expertise or your paid speaking or whatever it is that you're trying to sell, you know, because it's never about the thing that you're selling. It's about solving people's problems or helping people arrive wherever they want to arrive. Because one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of people make is, <laughs> granted, I do this myself, oddly enough, um, you know, one of the, the, the biggest mistakes that I see is they're selling the thing or thinking that the person you're selling to even cares about the thing itself. Let me tell you something. They don't. And I want you to hear me out. Whether you're selling a service or a coaching package or maybe an actual product or a book, successfully making the sale is not about the thing itself. It's about how that thing is going to make the recipient or the buyer do, feel, change, or achieve. It's about the destination. Where is that thing going to lead them to? Is it going to help them um earn more money with less struggle? Is it going to make them more attractive? Is it going to make them uh, be respected by the people at work? What will happen for the buyer as a result of making a purchasing decision, um, you know, rather than the actual service or product that you're selling yourself? Because a lot of times, you know, I've sold a service and a client has gone to have an amazing outcome before they've even gotten started, before we've even done anything, just because the feeling that it gives them for having made that purchase, all right? It's not just the thing that gets the results, but it's often the mental and emotional state behind the decision to make that purchase, right? The, 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 the Half of the time, that's why some people have what's called buyer's remorse, because when they actually then achieve the product that they wanted to buy, they will start asking themselves, is that all there is? So if you keep selling the thing, you forever feel as if you have to pull teeth in order to convince people to buy from you. People don't want to buy whatever you're selling. They want to buy the feeling they want to buy the change, they want to buy the achievement or whatever it is that will help them do or be doing have a happier existence. So that's why you have to make sure that emotion is always the primary driving factor when making a purchase. If you start talking in terms of features, you're appealing to the logic. But if you start talking in terms of benefits, then you are pulling the emotional strings. Now, how do you make somebody feel um, like they want to buy something? Because how you make someone feel when you're selling to them will have a big impact on whether they buy or not. You see, in the luxury space, that's why people allow you to take a car to test drive it so that you can actually drive it into your yard, into your garage. And then you can see if it is actually befitting. You drive it amongst your neighbors and see if it actually fits. That's why you're given a test drive. Because just looking at a car in a showroom, you don't quite see the emotion out of it. Or if you're in Australia... There's what, what they call display homes where you go in and then they have uh, decked out the, the, the house with really good furniture. And sometimes 
we me and my wife go in there just to look at the furniture not to look at the house we love our house but we go in there to look at the furniture because the furniture is now what makes the home it's not the brick and mortar the windows or anything else that creates um you know the feel that you're at home it's the couches the throw rugs and the pretend fruit and all those things that just make it feel like you're at home so how you make someone feel when you're selling to them will have a big impact on whether or not they buy from you. And say you're in the high ticket space in particular, this is an important point to note. Our clients aren't buying your training or information because it's a practical uh, process or philosophy. They're buying it because it, pre it triggers a certain emotion within them that makes them feel good or make sense of the world around them. This is the same with selling in general. No matter what you're selling, they ultimately say yes and do so with ease if you trigger their individual buying emotions. You know, people may believe that selling is about what you say. Nah, 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 it isn't. Selling is about how you make your client ultimately feel. In that moment, in that sales experience, it's not driven by whatever you say or how you formulate your clothes or how you say or uh, put your structure, closing structure together. It's how they feel. So if you can understand this, leverage it because it leads, um, you know, to forever winning your sales uh, to whoever you're going to be throwing stuff at. Trust me, it's one of your secret weapons. Use the emotion to pull people towards um, whatever you are buying. And I think it was uh, Dan S. Kennedy who wrote how you market or how you sell to the affluent. Because people don't buy in the same way. Some people like to buy expensive stuff. Some people like to look at the price. So you need to understand or know the kind of person that you're dealing with, first of all. You know, because many people forget that before anything else, people are first and foremost. We go through our own individual experiences and we are totally different. If you look at your fingers right now, no two fingers of the same hand are of the same height. So we don't buy the same way. We don't buy for the same reasons. Much in the same way that every selling style has to align with our own personality and our own values. And one of the most important things to understand is who you are selling to from the aspect of who they are as a buyer. Not just who they are as a person, but who are they as an actual buyer. What drives them to buy? Why do they need to buy? And what is their actual buying profile? Are they the right kind of person with the right kind of pain that your service or product can actually um, give the right outcome? Because you may find that you have different buyers for different offers that you might have within your business. In which case, the best sales process for your offer will also differ as per the person that you're delivering it to. So you want to dive deeper into who you're selling to and want to understand what actually drives them and really create a selling experience that nails getting a yes for yourself based on the person that you're talking to. And ultimately, the biggest thing that I've actually learned while I was selling across the board is selling is an experience for each and everyone who is involved uh, in the process. And it's one that you can leave, um, you know, you can actually leave as a seller with a massive high or a massive low just simply based on the on your performance. And the same can be said about the buyer. You know what I mean? The real key in selling is to understand maybe yourself and your selling superpower. And as, as in how best do you connect with people generally and then create selling experiences that are unique to the type of buyer that you're selling to. Because your aim is to create an emotional selling experience that leaves them excited to buy from you before you've even asked for the sale. So this is what we actually help 
um, a lot of small to medium businesses with. And we've helped over 450 businesses achieve online success. And we can do the same for you. You know, since my first foray in marketing and sales, I've partnered with more than 450 businesses and we've built an entire team of battle hardened marketing experts around me. All has to do with the way that I'm selling my ideas and my products to these people in order for them to be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable, right? So this can be you, you too. You too can be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. It just depends on how you put yourself out there. So like I said earlier on, approach each customer with the idea of helping them solve their problems and achieve a goal, not of selling a product or a service. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.